Welcome to Whiteboard Programming and today I'll be explaining you what is staking in crypto, how you can participate in it, what are the risks involved in staking and a brief outlook of staking versus other investment strategies. So let's get started. First off, what is staking cryptocurrency? Well, to state simply, staking is when a user pledges their crypto assets to a cryptocurrency protocol in order to earn rewards in exchange. In it, users can participate in securing the network by locking up their tokens as they will own a stake in it. Consequently, as a return to their service, users are rewarded for securing the network in the form of native tokens. The higher the amount of crypto assets you pledge, the higher is the reward you receive. The rewards are distributed on chain which means the process of earning these rewards is completely automatic. All you have to do is stake on the network. This means your crypto assets will earn you money even in your sleep. But hey, how are these rewards generated? Well, every time a block is validated, new tokens of that currency are minted and distributed as staking rewards. For example, proof-of-stake assets like Solana, Tezos, etc let you earn rewards on your staked assets. Primarily, there are two types of rewards that get distributed. Number one, staking rewards. Here, you stake your crypto assets with a proof-of-stake node to validate a block of transactions. If the node you have delegated to successfully signs or attests to blocks, you receive a staking reward, thereby increasing your net crypto assets. And similarly, in case your node is unresponsive or misaligned, for example, double signing, a portion of your node's assets and hence your assets can get slashed or destroyed. The staking rewards are thus an incentive for these nodes to perform the process of ordering the transaction, verifying them, collecting them in a block and subsequently validating the block. Number 2. Transaction Fee in addition to staking rewards, each transaction carries with itself a small fee making it easier for the node to prioritize the selection of transactions to be entered into the block. And the accumulated fees from the underlying transactions also goes to the node. We all know that transactions are what make up a cryptocurrency. For different protocols, these transactions could mean different things. They vary from token transfers to smart contract executions and despite the dissimilarity in transaction types, the common thread is that these transactions always get ordered and clubbed into a new block so that all nodes in a network can agree on the state of the network. Now in a centralized institute like a bank, every transaction can be verified by central authority that is bank's central server. However, the lack of centralized authority in the crypto world requires the verification and subsequent validation of these blocks by decentralized nodes of the network. These nodes are known by a variety of names, validators, bakers, etc. But their counterparts in a proof-of-work network like Bitcoin are called miners. Now that we all know how can we earn, let's understand how can one participate in staking. So. It's important to note that here, if proof of stake were a democracy, your stake would be your vote. And while staking is a fairly useful investment instrument for anyone whose assets are lying idle in a digital wallet or on a ledger, you must understand that there are only two roles you can serve when participating in staking. Number 1. Validation, which is appropriate for companies or technical enthusiasts. Number 2 Delegation which is appropriate for most individual crypto asset holders. And while understanding the role of a validation is quite easy, most people struggle on how delegation works. So in this video, I'll be drawing some light on the same. But first, if you don't know what is proof of stake, I would highly recommend you to watch this video. Link for the same is given in the description below. Going back, let's understand what is delegation staking. To state simply, the process of staking your assets with a validator without actually sending them your tokens is commonly called as delegation. This method is quite feasible for an individual crypto holder as not everyone can afford owning a huge number of tokens of a single currency or operating validation infrastructure to run validations. 
Delegating your assets means letting them count towards the stake of a validation in return for a share of the reward received. In practice, a delegator deposits token in a smart contract specifying the validator whose influence in the network they want to increase. As a result, the rewards earned in the validation process increase but instead of only the validator receiving the compensation, the rewards are automatically split between the validator and the delegator, usually by applying a simple commission rate. Further, let's compare staking with other investment strategies. Number 1. Holding Now, the traditional method of crypto investing was rather a straightforward experience. You obtain the desired crypto assets, store it or leave it on the exchange and wait. Simply holding a proof of stake token is no longer an optimal strategy now. Many networks reward participation by inflating tokens and handing them out to participants resulting in a dilution of the assets of non-participant token holders. And while keeping tokens liquid is a good strategy for short-term investors, it is not a wise or a recommended one for those who are in it for long haul. Number 2. Loan Tokens for example, using lending protocols like Aave or Compound. Number 3. Using tokens as collateral, for example, issuing DAI with the Maker Vault or using tokens in a decentralized finance protocol. Number 4. Liquid Staking Now, liquid staking combines the benefits of staking with the liquidity of the above mentioned strategies. The staked positions are tokenized and by doing that, one is able to receive liquidity. The liquid tokens provide further leverage through collateralization and investment in DeFi. Number 5. As we all know it, staking. This is the one we've been discussing for so long. As you already know, you can either be a delegate to other validators which is easy but offers fewer rewards or validate yourself which is difficult and offers average rewards. Now, if we closely analyze, staking is the most reasonable investment for the long-term investors, but liquid staking is emerging to be a clear winner among all other strategies. It provides the benefits of rewards accrual through staking while hedging the liquidity risk. In essence, the liquidity risk mitigation is a huge need that gets addressed through liquid staking and might become the reason for its success as well. Next, let's look into the risks staking crypto offers to an investor. Number 1. Liquidity risk associated with having to lock up staking tokens. Number 2. There is a risk of losing deposited crypto assets due to slashing. Number 3. Low returns due to bad validator performance. As there are functions that validators may need to perform like providing prices as oracles and all of this requires technical expertise. The lack of it is a risk to a delegator. Number 4. Minimum staking balance, which at times becomes a hindrance for small ticket investors. Number 5. The opportunity cost. There is an opportunity cost for using token differently, for example, loaning them. Not to mention there is an opportunity cost to stake with a different validator on the same network too. But it's not all bad news as well. There are a few benefits of staking cryptocurrency too. A few worthy mentions include number 1. It offers you a flexible approach for earning interest on your crypto assets. Number 2. Staking presents better value in terms of environmental consciousness in comparison to crypto mining with a limited environmental footprint. Number 3. Crypto staking does not imply the need for any advanced equipment and costly computing resources like in the case of crypto mining. Number 4. Staking crypto provides an opportunity for participants to contribute directly to the security and performance of the blockchain. Lastly, we can say that staking can be a good way for crypto investors to put their holdings to work, earning them interest and rewards. Plus, it can get you involved in the governance and the validation side of the blockchain network as well, which may be something of interest to certain investors. Further, it may be useful to think of staking as owning a stock and earning dividends or even putting money in a bank account and earning interest. Sure, it can be a relatively low lift way to grow your account, but be sure to do your homework. 
and know the risks of staking before starting it. With that, I hope this video was helpful to you and served value. If you love my content, feel free to smash that like button and if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do as it keeps me motivated and helps me create more content like this for you.